In this video, we're going to be looking at how to calculate the number of moles if you are given the mass of a substance in grams or kilograms, and if you are able to calculate the molar mass. In chemistry, we can convert between grams and moles using the following formula. So we can convert between grams and moles by using something known as our molar mass. And this is the first formula that we will go over when looking at how to calculate the number of moles. Let's have a look at this formula in more detail. N is number of moles, baby M is mass, and that is measured in grams, and big M is molar mass measured in grams per mole. The unit makes sense because look at our other variables in our formula, N being mole and baby M being grams, grams per mole. And remember, this formula allows us to convert between grams, so mass, and number of moles. You can also represent this formula by using a triangle. Number of moles, block it out, is equal to mass, baby M, divided by molar mass. If I wanted to work out the baby M, the mass in grams, block it out, that's equal to molar mass multiplied by N. So this way is multiply. If I want to work out the molar mass, block it out, it's equal to mass, divided by number of moles. So for example, how many moles are there in 100 grams of NaOH? If we take a look at our formula, we can see that they are looking for moles. They're looking for baby N, how many moles? They give me 100 grams, that is mass. And now you might be thinking, but they didn't give me molar mass. But as soon as they give you a compound or a formula unit over here, this is our molecular formula. As soon as you're given that, we can work out molar mass. Because remember, in order to work out molar mass, we use the periodic table and we use the atomic masses listed on the periodic table. So we take our periodic table, we look up the atomic mass for sodium, for oxygen and for hydrogen. We add them together and that gets us big M. So let's do it. It often helps to list out the variables. That helps us determine or decide which formula we want to use. Now, just to show you, my molar mass of 40 grams per mole, I added up all the atomic mass numbers on the periodic table. Sodium's atomic mass, 23, plus 16, which is oxygen's atomic mass number, plus hydrogen's atomic mass number, which is number one. Gives me 40. Now what you do is you write your formula first. You always need to write your formula first because in your exams, you get a formula mark. Then what we do is we substitute these values into the formula into the correct places. So we're looking for number of moles. Then we substitute mass, which is 100 grams into the formula. That's baby M. You substitute 40 grams per mole in the place of big M, which is molar mass. This will get you what we call a substitution mark. Then you work that out, you get your answer and you write it with your unit. That'll get you an answer mark. If you leave out the unit, you don't get that answer mark. In our second example, they're also asking for number of moles. So they're asking for N, number of moles. They give me the mass again, 20 grams. That is baby M. And they give me the compound, aluminium sulfate. Now that doesn't give us the molar mass immediately, but we know that we can work up the molar mass, big M, by using the periodic table. I'm going to list my variables, write my formula, and then I'll show you how we calculate it. So what I've done is I've listed my variables, I've calculated molar mass. If you need help with how to calculate molar mass, make sure to watch my video linked. I've written down my formula. Now I'm going to substitute, which means I'm going to put these values in the correct variables places. So again, you'll get a mark for your formula, you'll get a mark for substituting correctly, and your answer. Now take note how when I do this on my calculator, I get a decimal, 0, 0,0584. The rule in physics is you need to round off, in our case, so in grade 10 physics, how we do it, we round off to at least two decimal places. Now you obviously need to read the question. If they tell you a different number of decimal places or significant figures, you need to follow that. But in our tests, we do two decimal places. You do need to be aware of what the question is asking for. Because say for example, I give you a question where I give you three mole. That is N. So we know N is equal to three mole. I also tell you the compound. So say for example, it's calcium carbonate. And therefore I give you the molar mass, 100 grams per mole. So that is big M. And I want you to work out mass. This is different because we're not calculating N, but the steps that you follow are very similar. So you list your variables, you write your formula, 
you substitute into your formula. But in this case, I have three mole, so that goes in the place of N. I also know that I have 100 grams per mole. That goes in the place of big M. So I leave baby M open because that's what I'm trying to find, my mass. So 100 grams per mole is big M. It's my molar mass that goes here. And then you need to do slightly different order of operations in order to calculate your variable. So in this case, I'm looking for mass. In order to calculate mass, I simply say 3 times 100. Remember, we're solving for M. M is my variable. M, baby mass, baby M, mass, is being divided by 100. So when we take that over, we do the inverse times by 100. So mass is equal to 3 times 100, which is 300 grams. Just be careful of where your variables are and the order of operation that you need to do in order to solve for that variable. Another way that you could have done this is you could have looked at your triangle and you could have said, well, I need mass. Mass is in grams. That's what I'm looking for. In order to calculate mass, I need to take my molar mass multiplied by my N. Remember, I'm covering what I'm looking for, and it's these two things multiplied by one another. So molar mass, 100, multiplied by number of moles, 3. And there we go. But remember, it's very important. You need to write your formula. You need to show substitution. You need to write your answer with a unit. In the other videos in my playlist, we look at how to calculate things like volume at STP and concentration of a solution using some of these other formulae. Remember to check out the links in my description below for more stoichiometry videos, more chemistry and more physics videos.